one here today for this special event um, hosted by Frank City Council in conjunction with Naraman Jambana. Uh, and it's about grounded in truth. That is today, that is what this week's Reconciliation Week theme is about. Grounded in truth, walk together in courage. I'd like to introduce Annie Maurice as she'll give the welcome and acknowledgement to country. Woman Jenka, that means welcome to everybody and kia ora to any New Zealand or Maori. Kia, ora. kia ora. Okay. I would like to acknowledge and welcome the traditional owners of this land and pay my respects to the elders past, present and future and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be here today. According to tradition of this land has always been protected by our creator, Bunjalan, who travels as an eagle and by Warren who protects the waterways and travels as a crow. Bunjalan taught the Bunurong Bunurong always to welcome guests, but he always required that the Bunurong Bunurong ask all visitors to make two promises, to obey the laws of Bunjalan, not to harm the children of the land of Bunjalan. This commitment was made through the simple exchange of a small borough dipped in the water. The Bunurong Bunurong people continue their tradition as the proud custodians and protectors of these lands from the Werribee River to Port Phillip Bay to Western Port to Phillip Island and all the way to Wilson's Promontory. We encourage everyone to nurture and care for this land as we do with love and respect to protect the rivers, the creeks, the waterways, as they are the blood of this land and to observe the wisdom of Bunjilin to care for children, our next followers. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Anthony. Um, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Grant Lee. I'm the Reconciliation Officer for Frankston City Council and I'd like to introduce our Mayor, Councillor Michael O'Reilly. I don't know what it is about these events, Aboriginal events, but uh, I was at the footy on Saturday night at the Dreamtime Time and it was pouring rain then, so <laughs> certainly bring the rains with you. I'll be relatively short, but uh, I'd also like to um, acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Bunurong people, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and other Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be here today. I'd like to uh, also acknowledge Ani Maurice and um, Grant. Grant. Grant does a fantastic job for us here at Frankston City Council and we can't thank you but enough for all the efforts he, he puts in. Looking forward to hearing the stories that you have to share and enhance our knowledge and understanding of local Aboriginal culture and history here in the city of Frankston. I'm also looking forward to hearing <coughs> from Arnie Maurice with any stories that she might have to tell as well. Um, Grant, I understand you'll be uh, explore how each of us can contribute to um, reconciliation in this country because that's pretty much what we are as a country and that's what we're all aiming for. National Reconciliation Week is a very important event on the Australian calendar. It celebrates and builds on the respectful relationships shared by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and other Australians. It's an opportunity to learn about our shared histories, cultures and achievements and work towards the ultimate goal of reconciliation, strong and trusting relationships, enabling us to work together to bridge gaps and achieve a shared sense of fairness and justice. We embrace and celebrate cultural diversity in all of Frankston City, no matter where you come from, and specifically our original inhabitants of the land. Um, thank you for inviting me along today and uh, I'll pass it over to you. Thank you. Well, first off, we'll start off with Annie Marie's. She is a local and she will speak about Frankston and what she's seen over her years and the changes and how it's affected the Aboriginal community within the Frankston city area. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm very nervous, I must say that. Um, first of all, I'll say that I'm a very proud <coughs> Yorta Yorta woman. My mother is a Yorta Yorta Camera Jonah lady. Um, I was born in this area. I was born actually at Chelsea at home in, what, 39? Uh, 19th of the 8th, 1939. So I have seen quite a lot of changes and different things. Frankston, many years ago, was known as a resort area. 
Um, I think the first lot of land that was sold here was 1854. And we were a very proud race of Boonarong people. I remember my grandmother talking to my mother about um, Sweetwater Creek, which is named Cannonook now. And uh, where the Lifesaver Club is, my grandmother came from there. She lived in the Mia Mia, which uh, was known as a humpy in those days. She lived there on the foreshore, so um, I had a lot to do, do with my grandmother until she passed on. What else? I can remember uh, coming with my grandfather around Frankston area in Davies Street to see where my mother went to school, well, that little school that's up there. I think there were about 12 pupils at that time there. And the only other school was in um, Morty Allen. Yeah, that state school on the Station Street side. Uh, I remember the Nepean Highway was called Bay Street at that time then, is now the Nepean mm -hmm. Highway. Mechanics Hall near the Royal mm -hmm. Exchange. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Mechanics Hall and they had the exchange, the telephone exchange in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, what the else? Wattle Pele. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The dance hall. I'm glad your memory's good too. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's fading a bit. Um, yeah, I have seen a lot of changes and, and different names of the Cannonook Creek, uh, uh, which was called Taranong. And I can remember, like, that Frankston was spelt after an English general, which is Franks, Frank Ton. Frank Stone, that's exactly mm. right, yeah. Um, and then, then they've changed it to several other names and they don't know how they got to the point of Frankston. We used to have a councillor called Frank Wells, so maybe they took his first name. Yes, there has Frank's been talk yeah, about that. Um, Frankston's pub. Who pardon? Frankston's pub. Yes, well it was the only pub here, the Grand. <laughs> the grand. Pub. It was the only, grand, the only yeah. pub here yeah. and uh, unfortunately the partners, one partner murdered the other one and he was hung that very day because he admitted. Well, that was quick. Yeah, As you can very see, dark. Grease can go on a bit of tangent, but that's, that's, <laughs> but that's the point about yarning. Aboriginal people, we don't just stick to the one topic. We go on the different things. Yeah. But I'll ask, As it comes to your memory. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll ask Adi Maurice because she said this in the car um, about the hill. What's of uh, the uh, Oliver's Hill. Yeah, yeah. Oliver's Hill was a burial ground, the same as the Victoria Market, an Aboriginal burial ground. And one of the chieftains that was up there, his head is being decapitated and it's still in England in the museum. Yes. Oh, you remember that? No, a lot of people I, don't I know that. I remember that they took some... Yeah, yeah body so parts and that yeah. because of the, the markings on the face and the symbol yeah. and the markings of how high and prestige the, yeah. the hunter was, you know, and things like that. Like getting back to Gary Eads, a football player, when he done that dance and people said he looked like, or a person said he looked yeah. like a gorilla. Yeah. To us it was a dance of victory, yeah. you know, so yeah. he got the last goal, so he deserved to do that dance. And he was proud, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. because we don't educate people uh, at primary school, we should start first of all about the first people. So people mm -hmm. can understand our culture and how we feel about it. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about land, you know, we're talking about our Mother Earth, the provider of everything. She provides our food, she provides our health, she provides the warmth in wood, even certain trees bark and that they used to make shoes out of and the sinews from the kangaroo, they tied those uh, bark around there. So all the, you know, you've mm. got to have respect and you've got to understand culture to understand how we think about our land. We're very, very passionate about um, our being and, and our pride and even if you're a white skin like I am, I, I feel very much for my, my family, my mother's culture, very more mm. so than the Irish side of my father coming in, <laughs> an auntie coming it. here as a botanist. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what else are we going to talk about? Uh, I remember the police station that went up in, uh, I think it was Davy Street, the corner of yeah, Davy and yeah. Plain or something like that. And the wood yard, we used to get coal 
from Oh, Dad had a wood yard in Wellstreet. That's it, yes. We, well, we used to go there in a horse and dray with my mm. grand, grandpa. And then there was another one in Plain Street where mm. that young girl was murdered and mm. her body was found quite a while back. Mm. And then later on, the other two murders that were the first two murders of two girls in um, Cannonock taken from the station that started coming. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realise that. Never yeah, found it. Never. And a lot of people don't realise also that um, Lang Warren was quite a famous place here. It was the biggest military place right. in the whole, whole in the of Second Victoria. World, the Second World War. Yes. Even that's Frankston right. Road. Yeah. All down the sides to the sand pits. And all of the uh, Frankston North was all yeah. Navy homes in those days. Mm. Do you remember Frank's station had a little kiosk on it? Yeah. And the only time you ever see a lot of people coming here was Easter and Christmas. Now get their billy cans and go to the shop, pay tuppence for a, a billy can full of boiled water mm -hmm. to have a cup of tea and stuff like that in those days. Um, did you find yourself, because you were more lighter skinned, you found it easier to be able to travel around in the Frankston area? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Except um, people used to look at my grandma when she was with me, and they used to say, "Your carer has to stay outside." Mm. <gasps> that's, you know. oh, that's a shame. Yes, yeah. and they couldn't use the toilets, mm. the same as the white mm, people. I remember Different. That. Yeah, that was very that's very American hard. Thing too, yes, segregation yeah. part. So that was very hard. And I can remember my mum later on laughing about her and one other Aboriginal lady. When you went to school, you used to get in a line and, and they'd play God Save the Queen, you'd march mm. in and you had to bow or something before this picture of the Queen and they refused to do it and they refused to wear shoes. <laughs> so they were always in, always in trouble, you know. My mum said, this little black ducky's not doing that, you know. So it was all, we were always proud and Grandma used to hide us because of being so white skinned and things like that, uh, which was pretty hard. And then as you grow up, like, um, I have a lot of people that say to me, oh, for instance, i have done a painting and the state, for the state trustee, mm -hmm. i done a painting and we, I had an exhibition <coughs> and a lady come up and she liked my paintings and one in particular she really wanted. And I had my resume up there with my mm. number on it and everything to prove who I was, you know, mm. and that I am Aboriginal. Then she took one look and the head come back like a chook and she said, oh my goodness, she said, you could be in a lot of trouble. Mm. And I said, what for? She said, you can't go doing those dots and that kind of work and say that you're Aboriginal. Oh, I thought, well, how black do I have to be, you know? Mm. I know who I am. And I said, well, if you had have read my resume, you would have found that I'm um, a legal person and, and stuff like that. And then she calmed down. She said, well, my dear, you don't look Aboriginal. In fact, you don't have to say you are. Oh, what, a, what an insult, you know. And, it, um, and I can understand a lot of coloured people, black people, when you say something to them, you know, and they've got a a bit of white in them, they're coffee coloured and that. I can understand the pain that they, they go through all the time of being questioned because of the colour of the skin. It is very degrading, it is very hurting. You know, where your heart is, is where you are. And you don't belong until you find out really who you are. Mm. Um, I've got friends that are Aboriginal and they're, they're white and they didn't know who they were and I said, well, Give me a name. Can you give me a name or a tribe? Because I can remember different families. The, the Walkers were the first Aboriginal family in, in Frankston area. And then the Nicholson, past the Nicholson's family. They were the second lot of people that were here. And then there was a lot of mixed race up at uh, Mordialic where the last great hunter was Jimmy Dunbar. Can you remember that? No. Well, well, he was the last race up there, the Jimmy Dunbar, so um, <coughs> he ended up dying in the Alfred Hospital. Uh, he was taken by a cart 
from Mordialli to the Alfred Hospital where he two days and the, his dogs, 12 to 14 dogs, followed because hunters always had dogs. The, your, your dog was your protector. He would go and fetch whatever you killed. He would keep you warm in the winter time. He would keep rats and mice away because the blackfellow just ate something, threw it at the back of him, you know, whatever, things like that. So the dog was a great protector. What else? <laughs> I'm getting dry, yeah. Oh, you're getting dry. Okay, we'll leave it at that. How's that? Yeah, it's going to be good. I'd like to thank Ali Maurice for that.